on page 23 in the explain to section where we're going to be drawing rotations on a coordinate plane and on the previous sections um, we were <coughs> we were still doing rotations um, but we're going to be learning how to do it with uh, specific um, coordinate notation kind of I don't know I don't know what you call this a specific you have to <coughs> things that you might have to memorize um, if your teacher is super strict or um, if you're if you're my, if you're one of my students, I actually don't have you or require you to memorize it. As long as you understand the concept, that's what I'm more concerned with. But anyhow, um, what it looks like basically uh, as we're dealing with coordinates is, is this: when we're moving something 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise about the origin. What it look like? What it looks like with coordinates is if your 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 original x y value is going to switch places and your y value is going to become negative. That first value is going to become negative. <coughs> so on and so forth. And so this is a chart that describes all the different ways that it looks in coordinate notation. And you'll notice here that um, between each of these uh, different um, different rules that you'll see that they all look different as well. So uh, as long as you understand that uh, the differences between these and you can, uh, when you're doing the problem, you can identify, oh, the problem is asking for a 90 degree rotation. It should look like this. Um, that's what I'm concerned with. So, <coughs> jumping instead of the example, we're going to jump straight to uh, the problems on the next page on page 24. The first one is done for us. Um, the rules for rotation on a coordinate plane for 90 degrees clockwise or 270 degrees counterclockwise. Some of you might be uh, confused. Why are they putting two of these, right? Well, it's because if you're starting in quadrant one and you go 90 degrees clockwise you'll end up here but if you go 270 degrees counterclockwise you'll still end up in the same place <coughs> so it can be either one and so um, that's what they that's why there's two different um, this, uh, two different descriptions there but um, if you uh, if you get this question and you, you didn't have the answer you can go 90 degrees clockwise 90 degrees clockwise is here so you're expecting this your xy value is going to become y negative x. And sure enough, your xy value becomes y negative x. And what that looks like is um, to rotate the figure, all x values will be y values. So um, you kind of have to parse what this is saying. All your x values become y values. All y values become the opposite sign of the um, x value. So um, take the time to kind of read and, and try to figure out what each of these uh, are saying. So let's take a look at questions two through four now. <coughs> question two here, well not even question two, the next part here. 90 degrees counterclockwise or 270 degrees clockwise. So in this case, you're gonna go, nine, so if you're, if you're in this quadrant, you're gonna go 90 degrees clockwise, you're gonna end up here. What it looks like is this, your xy value is gonna become negative y comma x. And so, let's see. Um, to rotate the figure, um, all x values will take the opposite sign. All y values will take the opposite sign. So this one, in this case, it, there's um, both signs don't take the opposite sign, only uh, where the original x value was. So it's not going to be b. Let's take a look at c. To rotate the figure, all x values will take the opposite sign. <coughs> all y values will take the x value. So there you go. So this sounds more like what this is, right? So Because it's saying that the x values will take the opposite sign. And um, all y values would just take the x value. So this is most likely C. Uh, 180 degrees rotation. Uh, your x, y values are going to just uh, change signs. Um, so I think that was what B was. To rotate the figure, all x values will take the opposite sign. All values will take the opposite sign as well. So this is probably B because both of these are taking opposite signs. And then... Um, just by the process of elimination, this is a D, but let's read it. In any case, in, in a 360 degree rotation, you're going to end up in the same place. Um, all X values remain the same, all Y values remain the same. So, yes, so that's probably the right choice for D. Okay, let's take a question, let's take a look at question number two. Um, in question number two, PQR, this triangle here is going to go 90 degrees about the origin. And in this case, they don't specify clockwise or counterclockwise. So again, we're gonna we're gonna assume, right? We're gonna assume that this is gonna go um, counterclockwise, right? They they actually write it right here, just so we remember. Um, 
we're going to assume counterclockwise. So this thing here is going to rotate this way, right? So uh, 90 degrees about the origin. If you don't remember, you can refer back to here because I don't remember either. 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. So your xy is going to become negative y comma x, right? So xy is going to become negative y comma x. Okay, so let's get the pre-image coordinates down first. Your p is going to be at 2 comma 1, right? 2 comma 1. That's p. Q is at, what is this? Uh, 34. 4 comma 1. 4 comma 1. Q is at 4 comma 1. R is going to be at 4 comma negative 3. Uh, 4 comma negative 3. And, okay, so what's going to happen is your x, y values are going to change and and your uh, first value, that x value, is going to become negative. So let's do that. Here's p prime. It's going to become 1, 2, but now this one's going to be negative. q is going to become 1, 4, but this is going to be negative. Uh, r prime is going to be um, 3, 4, and it's going to be positive 3, where, uh, whereas it was uh, negative 3 originally. So let's graph this, uh, let's graph this uh, new pqr here. Negative 1, 2. Here's my p prime q prime is going to be negative 1 comma 4 here's my q prime r prime is going to be um, 3 comma 4 so 1 2 3 comma 4 right here this is my r prime so here we go uh, there's my new I should have made it a different color but um, you know so there's my new pqr okay rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin okay Last question for this uh, video. Quadrilateral DEFG is going to go 180 about the origin. So if we look back here at the chart, 180 about the origin, your XYs just take different signs, opposite signs. So let's see. Uh, your XY becomes negative X, comma, negative Y. And once you do these so uh, pretty often, you'll, you'll, memorize, you'll end up memorizing that chart instead of referring to it uh, over and over again. So um, let's go DEFG. Let's go ahead and and write all these coordinates. D is at what? This is negative 3 comma 1. Um, negative 3 comma 1. E is at negative 1 comma 1. Negative 1 comma negative 1. Uh, F is at negative 1 comma negative 1. F is going to be at negative 1 comma 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, negative 1 comma negative 4. Oops. Negative 1 comma negative 4. And then G is going to be at negative 3 comma negative 3. All right, negative three comma negative three. Okay, so um, we're just changing the signs of all these. So D prime is going to be at uh, positive three comma negative one. E prime is going to be at one comma one. F prime is going to be at one comma four. <coughs> and then uh, G prime is going to be at three comma three. Let's go ahead and graph this. In fact, let's change the color like I said I wanted to. Let's change this to red, okay? change the color to red as well so three comma negative one is right here here's my d prime e prime is going to be right here e prime one comma one uh, f prime is going to be one comma four here's f prime g prime is going to be at three comma three three comma three right here three comma three which is um g prime i don't know why i wrote the coordinates okay so from here to here here to here, and here to here, and lastly, from here to here. There you go. <coughs> so there's my new DEFG.